Hello and welcome to our lesson on solving problems with angles in parallel lines. Now our three angle properties we need to know to solve these problems. The first one is that alternate angles appear in a Z shape and these angles are equal. The next is that corresponding angles appear in an F shape and these are also equal. And the third angle property is that interior angles appear in C shapes and they add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to apply these angle properties to calculate the size of angle A and angle B. And we can see that angle A is interior with a green 110 degree angle. So they must add up to 180 degrees. So angle A plus the 110 degree is equal to 180 degrees. We can take away the 110 from both sides. So angle A will be equal to 70 degrees. And angle B is also interior, but this time with the 80 degrees. So again, they add up to 180. So angle B plus 80 is equal to 180 degrees. We can take away 80 degrees on both sides. And these will cancel because they equal zero. So angle B will equal 100 degrees. And we can check that this is right because we have four angles in a quadrilateral and they should add up to make 360. So 110, which is a green angle, plus angle A, which is 70, plus angle B, which is 100, plus the 80 degree angle. And that does add up to make 360 degrees. Okay, for question B, we have an isosceles triangle where the two opposite base angles must be the same. And angles in a triangle will add up to make 180. So we can work out angle C and E as 180 minus 65, which is 115 degrees. And because C and E make 115 and they're both equal, we can divide this by two. So angle C, is equal to angle E, which is equal to 57.5 degrees. So angle C and angle E both equal 57.5 degrees. And now we can use alternate angles with F and C because these appear in a Z shape. And because they are alternate, angle F will also equal 57.5 degrees. Angle D and angle E are also alternate, so these will also be equal, and angle D is equal to 57.5 degrees. We know this is right because F, 65 and D lie along a straight line and should add up to 180, which they do. Okay, let's try some more questions. So do you want to try and work out angle G, H and I in question C and all the angles in question D? You can pause the video and resume it when you're ready. For angle H, you can see it is alternate with the 20 degree angle because they both lie along a Z shape. So angle H will also be 20 degrees. Angle I and the 75 degrees are corresponding because they lie within an F. So angle I is 75 degrees. And we can work out angle G using angles on a straight line, which is 180 minus the 20 minus the 75. So angle G will be 85 degrees. And we can check this because the G plus the 75 plus the 20 will equal 180. We know G is 85. And 85 plus 75 plus 20 does make 180 degrees, which is angles in a triangle. And finally, for question D, we can see that angle R and the 32 degree angle are alternate because they lie within a Z shape. So angle R will be 32 degrees. And this is vertically opposite angle N. So angle N will be the same as 32. We can work out angle K 
because it lies along a straight line with the 32 and the 84 degree angle. It's 118 minus the 32 minus the 84. So angle K is 64 degrees. And this is vertically opposite with angle J, which is also 64 degrees. And you can see it is alternate with angle P. So again, these will be equal at 64 degrees. And finally, we can see that angle M and 84 degrees are vertically opposite. So angle M will be 84 degrees. We can check this using the three angles J plus M plus N. Because they lie along a straight line, they should equal 180. And 64 plus 84 plus 32 does make 180 degrees. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Thanks again and take care.